Nutrient Equine Race Series tomorrow night at Bendigo. A huge night of uh, racing with some really high quality race horses going around. Andy Gaff joins me firstly. Andy, welcome. No, um, no. Here at Sunny Ballarat. <laughs> a little bit coincidental how this is all, all worked about, but it does actually tie in. I've uh, just done a chat with Anton and uh, he said that you were on your way and I thought, oh, this is going to make lot, my life a lot easier. Basilica. Bred here at um, Arastatrotters and Yabby Dam Farms. Um, high price yielding from the nutrient yielding sales for Alabar Farms, but um, he was good last week. Yeah, no, he's, um, he's a horse that hasn't had a lot of racing. He's had a few little setbacks throughout his career. But saying that, he's quite a big horse and still a little bit immature and needs to sort of fill out, but um, quite happy that he's sort of where he's at. I thought Kilmore, he was quite good. Uh, he had opportunity to win, but he wasn't quite good enough, so probably racing seven days or eight days apart will probably do him really good. He's, you know, he's quite a gross colt um so yeah he's definitely got a life winning chance especially if the barrier draws the way they've fallen well they have worked into into your favor and we'll touch on those in a sec prince of rock the horse at one at bendigo uh, sorry at kilmore um if you're not quite hard fit and that the way that he races he brings you undone a bit doesn't he yeah no you know it's going to be truly run and, and he's got terrific gate speed uh, i thought my bloke uh, began really well kilmore and he was past us before we knew it so um, um hopefully it's the same scenario again that you know we're fenced behind the leader and it sort of runs along prince of rock and we can be that little bit better and he can maybe be, be that little bit worse and and obviously the locomotion we saw what he done last year too he's a quality horse he's you know he'll improve on that first up run so um it's going to be a pretty tough race you're a great form student um how does the barrier draws like does it change the betting or is it as simple as the exposed form from from kilmore i mean all the horses went around at kilmore or stepping out again at bendigo but um has the barrier draw changed it a lot probably only with the locomotive um it was off the back row um you know it's drawn the front end it got some reasonable gate speed too but whether he can sort of hold prince of rock earlier time will tell but um we were just sort of hoping that if he drew the front row that we drew inside Prince of Rock. Of course, if you drew outside him, you've got no chance of crossing him and getting him to the fence. Yep, so that, that part's worked out for you guys, so that makes it a bit easier. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Prize money on offer, $125,000. Three-year-old trotting colts, bring it, didn't it? Yeah, no, it's wonderful, and um, yeah, um, it's been a great sale. Um, pretty, you know, probably some of the races just a little bit light on, so... Um, but still, um, you know, it gives you a great opportunity to buy them from the sales. You can race for this type of money. And it's great how they've done it, Poppy, for the trotters a little bit backwards, 65000 for the two-year-olds. And as we know, trotters take a little bit longer to mature and 125 once they turn three. So, um, you know, I think that works really, really well. Probably from your point of view, you weren't ready. Um, everything didn't work for Sydney um, for the first sales, which uh, the locomotive did win. Like you said, gives you that time to look after a, a high-priced horse, look after him, do the right thing by him and still have the opportunity to race for good money. Yeah, no, definitely. And, uh, yeah, uh, whoever come up with that idea, I think it's a great idea. I'd say Pat. I reckon it'd be Pat, but uh, we're not 100% sure. But I might try and take it. Uh, the Nutrient Equine Classic for the two-year-old fillies, $175,000. Just ridiculous, the money that is on offer. Um, the Sun and the Moon, uh, for yourself, lightly race horse. Gets a good draw, though. Yeah, obviously... Um most of us are going to be running for second. Um, you know, Ricky's horse is a quality quality filly, and you think it's going to spear to the front and be too good. So, uh, second prize money is good. So, third money and fourth prize money. She was probably wasn't quite ready uh, for this race going into the heat, but she was nearly ready to trial, and we thought we'll chance her arm and uh, run her in the heat. And she sort of found the line quite good. She did hang in a little bit, and she'd be better for the racing experience. And she's come up with a really good draw. So, um, if she could run second, it'd be a great result for the owners. As I said there before, but you know in your form, Lux a Turner, I've been fortunate enough to see her twice, both uh, the Pink Bonnet and um, Bathurst, and she she's an exceptional filly, isn't she? Oh, she's a great filly, and um, being one drawn behind her might sound good if you're on her back, but then there'll be a huge gap where you've got to take up the rest. Maybe three fence might be better for us, but um, yeah, you expect that she's going to get the job done, but it's going to be great money for all those other horses. Um, they're not, not nothing to the calibre of, of Lux a Turner, but um, yeah, some nice, some probably not great horses going to earn some pretty good money. Just, just on that, like some people might wonder what you're saying there, um, and I think back to the pink bonnet, but when Ricky pushes a button and we presume she's going to come back the same as what she was, she just leaves them, and, and you're that first horse facing that breeze. It can be a bit daunting, can't it? Yeah, it can, and uh, whoever's leading up to Peloton, which might be my filly, it's, it's going to be tough. So, uh, yeah, they're all pretty equal, the rest of the competition. So, um, yeah, hopefully uh, it looks after and doesn't go too hard. And then you go back to the last last race, and I was just talking to An An um, Anton just there before, a couple of really nice horses, albeit in a, in a slowly run race at um, Gilmore, but I tell people to ignore that because I think Greg Sugar's just, well, he, he knew it was a heat. Um, he knew everyone else was qualified, so he went as slow as I've ever seen in any, <laughs> any race. But you've got the first starter in this, um, the beautifully bred Ewing. Um, one, what what can we expect from him? Yeah, um, 
we tried to qualify him for the heat and he actually drew barrier four behind the starter and he was just a little bit hesitant going up to the gate. So he was off the gate. The he was out the trial. So he was off the gate a little bit his first trial and that's why he didn't qualify. But he hit the line quite good. He doesn't really know what he's doing. Then his next trial, he was able to win it. He's a little bit laid back. Um, he doesn't really know what's racing about yet, but but he's sort of a foolproof trotter. Um, he's got the breeding on his side. I think he's going to be a nice trotter once the penny tr penny drops with him. And again, great opportunity. First start in race worth 65000 And um, yeah, I'm sure he's a life chance. I think he'd be better for those two trials and he's only going to get better with the racing. And he's got these two main dangers drawn inside him, but he's a, he's a horse that sort of keeps giving. And yeah, I think Kate will be able to put him in the race if the tempo's pretty slow. Talk about Val and, uh, Valtino, Val Therens. A lot of our markets, the horse of um, uh, Alex um, Ashwood, um, even he was okay. Like, it's only a small field, but there's a little bit of uh, quality in the race. Yeah, and juvenile trotters can improve greatly just off one run or even two runs. Um, you know, sometimes you see him and you think, you know, sometimes I race against and think, hell, that one beat me, <laughs> you know, two weeks ago I bet it easily, but they just build confidence and they get a little bit of confidence they can prove just virtually overnight. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a tricky little race and going to be very competitive, even though it's a small field because there's three or four good, good winning hopes. Rest of the night, mate, um, Bay of Biscay, um, there's some, you know, the Phillies likes to turn Super horses just to come and watch. Like, we want people to get back to the races. If there's um, ever a reason to get back, then you go tomorrow night is one of those reasons. Yeah, uh, no disrespect to you, Paul. I don't go to the races to see you. I go and see you. I, I, go if I, I won't interview you now. It's all good. <laughs> no, I go if I have to go. But even me, I just love seeing great horses race. Yeah. And, you know, Bay Biscay was terrific. Um, you know, Benny go first up and even the big boss is a quality horse and the three-year-old race is going to be a cracking race. So, yeah, there's so many quality horses and they're going to be horses of the future. So to see them in the flesh, um, for me, I, I love seeing them sometimes. Um, yeah, been in the game for a long time, but I never get sick of seeing good horses. No, and you talk about the big boss, um, Bayer Biscay. I mean, what, they run 26-7 or something, and yeah. there's a half head between the pair of them. Neither of them were punished to the line either. I mean, it was just two horses really trying to beat the other horse. It was just brilliant to watch. Yeah, it was, and they're both going to have great careers going forward, and, you know, this is where it all starts from, juvenile racing, and you know, we get to follow them their journey and see um, we all have opinions who's going to turn out the best, and someone will be right, someone will be wrong, and, and something else emerges. So you, you never know, but it's great to see in the early stages these horses. And this race series is going to work out beautiful for uh, for some of those horses as well because it's a good stepping stone to the end of the year with um, some high quality races at the end of it but they're racing for huge prize money this weekend. Yeah it is. I think it the timing of it works out pretty good. We're just leading into our Vic Red series, which is coming up. So some of these horses getting a couple of nice runs under their belt and racing for really good money. And so, um, yeah, they'll be able to race for the, into the Vic Red, into the Breeders' Crown. So, um, yeah, the timing of it's really good. Andy, thank you very much. Quickly before I let you, you go catch a wave tomorrow night, everything's OK with him? Yeah, you know, he's in really good order. Um, it's always tricky. The back row draw over 1,700. We knew he was going to draw this on the last four starts. So um, I don't think many in the race had 600-odd thousand <laughs> in their last four starts. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was disappointing how we got beat first up. But sometimes um, it's a good thing. Sometimes you get a little bit complacent with those quality horses. So, um, yeah, he's had, he's had a good workload since and I expect him to race really well. It's one of the great oddities. You say you go to a lot of race meetings. Someone pointed out to me, two, uh, there was uh, actually three lots of brothers taking on each other, um, but only one could win in Queensland out of the four. But um, Leap to Fame and Swayze took on each other. The older brother comes out on top. Yumbuckian and Catcher Waves go against each other. The older brother comes out on top. doesn't happen that often. I actually point, I've got to point this out to Grant, I reckon, but it doesn't happen that often. It was just a little oddity that did happen over that weekend, mate. It was. Uh, Central Otago took on Ohio Koei last week. He's the older brother, and I thought I was going to beat him home, but <laughs> uh, unfortunately a gallop. So that's where it ended. <laughs> I did indeed, but they're the, they're the fun things about it. You'll be at Bendigo, mate. Um, hopefully I do catch up with you. Hopefully you've uh, had a winner or two. So good luck to you guys, especially with Basilica. high price horse um, sale topping uh, Colt um, here in Australia. So good luck to yourself. Connections, Alabar, of course, great supporters and sponsors. And uh, thanks for joining me for a quick chat. Uh, thanks, Paul. Thanks, man.